security system, lights, shades, TVs, thermostats, showers, faucets, speakers, a subwoofer in the shower. Okay, it is time for an update of one of my favorite videos that we did on the house videos. One of the videos that we did very early on in the process when we just had the wood on the walls and wires just sticking out and going everywhere was all about the smart home and the brains of our dream home. And so now that our house is complete, we've been living in it for about a month and a half. We've had time to actually go through and enjoy the different automation and controls that we have and the smart system. It's time to show you what we did inside of the house and hopefully give you some ideas if you're building a house or if you just want to see some of the top technology that you can have inside of a house in 2020. Thanks to Heartwalker Automation for installing all of this into our house and True Audio for sponsoring this video and for putting the amazing speakers inside of our house and in the backyard. Before we even get inside of the house, we have to stop at the front door to show you what kind of things that we did. And this is Clint. You probably remember Clint from our other video. He owns Heartwalker Automation. Clint and the other owner, Steve, have been the ones that have helped us for this house and they've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours putting in the wires and then making sure everything works and then coming back afterward to make sure that everything is fine-tuned because you can put in whatever nice things you want that's automated but the real magic is when you go on the back end of it and you actually get into the computer and you program everything the way that you want it for your house so when we kind of tie in all the automation system it allows us to have like a lot of different aspects tied in so as soon as we press the doorbell we kind of can control the lighting in the house or we can Let's into that. Here's Nintendo. <laughs> Play different sounds, whatever sound you'd like through the speakers, whether it's just on the entryway or out by the pool. So there's a video intercom system. So there's a security camera, I guess a video camera on there that goes to my phone, that goes to all of the different tablets inside of the house and you can answer and talk to somebody. Let's go inside. Hi dog. <laughs> Don't be sprayed. We're just doing a YouTube video. That's it, it's just a video. It's all right. On our front door, we do not have anywhere for a key. The lock is actually a touch screen that you can touch, put in your code, whatever it is, unlock it. And then when you shut the door, we programmed it at our house that after a certain time period of the door being shut and no activity at it, it automatically locks. So Clint, last time we were here on the video, we showed a ton of wires that was just like a rat's nest of wires. Let's see how organized you got since then. If you remember, all the kind of lighting loads for the home were coming into a few panels throughout the house, this being two of them. So essentially all the light switches for the home are located inside of these panels. So each of these modules, that accounts for a light somewhere in the house. We just turned it off. We don't have the typical light switches that you see at most houses. These have programmable buttons. So this is the hallway right here. There's the kitchen. Part Walker actually named every one of the light switches. And then they've come back a few different times since we lived here and said, okay, you've been living here for a while now. Which ones make sense and which ones bug you? Should we change some of the light switches? And so we've changed some of them. Say it's off and I want it to go on, but I just want it to like be dim and not be super bright. I can hold it down and then just let go as soon as it's as bright as I want. So if I want it 20%, 30%, 40%, I could just hold it. It's dimming, it's getting brighter, 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 and it just programs and goes up. We even have buttons in here that you double tap on it and it shuts off all the lights in the entire house. Or we have relax mode. All of the can lights turned off. If it was nighttime, you would see that right up here, we have some nice dim lights that are going up. This is probably 15, 20% bright right there. We can control it with these buttons like we showed you. I can control it on my Control 4 app. But then we also have this touch screen that we can control the lighting on there. So we go to lighting. It's got every single light in the house to porch chandelier, we can turn it up to 100% to 0%. And we have different scenes that are set up that's like, welcome, turns the lights on to like a really nice one. This one's one of my favorites right here. It's called Living Romance. And check it out. Boom, the fireplace just turned on. Clint wanted to put some like uh, saxophone music on when that does that. And like, bounce chicka wow. I kind of vetoed that. I'm fine without the music, but it is pretty funny. <laughs> So we can turn the house on and off really easily with the touchpad, but there's also one more. We have Alexa enabled inside of our house and we can talk to it. You've seen the video with our faucet and how we can just say, Alexa, ask Kohler to pour one cup of water. Okay, here's Kohler for me. Dispensing one cup. Alexa, turn the house off. Okay. All the lights go out. The, the door's just locked. 
there's so many controls and that's why we've waited so long to make this video because there's a learning curve. You gotta learn how to use all this stuff inside your house and then reprogram it the way that you wanna use it. Alexa, turn the house on. I like it better with the lights on in here. Okay. Last time when we filmed our video with Clint, we just had an entire wall of wires just coming in and it was madness. And so now here we are back in the same room. It looks a bit more organized. Do you know what all of this stuff does? Oh yeah. This looks like something that belongs inside of a business. A lot of it does. A lot of it is commercial grade. We kind of took a little more commercial grade approach on this. Um, this is kind of all our network gear. So it's all the internet stuff in the home. Um, the smart home processors are kind of all down here. We've got backup batteries that kind of store every or store some energy for us if the power ever goes out so we can make sure the cameras are still recording and the, the network's still kind of up and running. Uh, video distribution so we can kind of share all our video, all the Apple TVs, Blu-ray throughout the whole home, um, all our surround sound receivers, and then these are all the amplifiers for the house. So all Whoa. kind of the subwoofers in the house, all the speakers throughout the house. Um, those are all the amplifiers for that. And then behind it, you can see the wires. They are all nicely and neatly brought in and they're all plugged into different places. And pretty much anywhere in this house, there's a wire. Whenever I'm like, you know what, I'd really like to have the internet right here in this wall that connects to my computer. They're just, Steve's like, all right, yeah, we can get the internet. We got a wire behind this wall and he just like goes in and has it. So the internet is one of my favorite things. Right now we have a gigabit up and a gigabit down. To show you what I mean, this is a file from Easter. We had the uh, Easter Bunny come by our house. Pretty cool, Easter Bunny just showed up. And uh, this file is 2.92 gigabytes. So if I go onto Google Drive and I drop this file in, 2.9 gigabytes. To YouTubers, this means a lot. I just put push to upload, it says less than a minute left already. At my old house, we had 20 upload speed versus here around 900. So this probably would have taken me 30 minutes, maybe an hour. It just finished in less than a minute. And now it's uploaded to the drive so my awesome editor can go in here and work with it. But to show you, here's the speed test page. Watch this. Speed test, go. Here's the download speed. We're pushing like 900. To all my YouTube friends that are watching this, this is a big deal, the download speed. And now the upload speed, which is not something that you see that often of the upload speed being very high because most people are just downloading Netflix and watching shows. But for a YouTuber, the upload speed is super important. And look at that. I'm pushing over 900 Mbps right now. That is fast, that is fiber, that's gigabit. And you're probably like, why do you have so many amplifiers? Well, um, we have lots of speakers in this house. How many speakers Modern do you think amplifiers. are inside of our house? I've been asked that a couple times. I would say between like 150 and 200 ish, maybe 180 and 200. Are you serious? I bet we're pretty close to that, yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. So there's one speaker inside of the house that um, I need to get your opinion on. And it takes some convincing to convince Leslie. So we're gonna go ask her about it on camera. Let me show you the upstairs view of what this is. Okay, right now. We are inside of the attic, as you can see, like there's the roof up there. And then there's a bunch of insulation. Here's the air conditioner over here and a bunch of that cotton candy insulation. And then look right there. That is a subwoofer. It's a true audio subwoofer. Right below there is the shower. We have two speakers inside of the shower, but they're like, why don't we put a subwoofer inside of the shower so you can hear it better? I think that's a great idea. But in order to do that, ugh, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm back, I'm back in the house. In order to do it, we have to cut the tile in the top of the shower. It's a little bit of a process, but we would have a subwoofer in the shower. Hey. Hi. Okay, I need your input on some stuff with the smart home. Okay. This is Leslie. Sorry, my eyes are watering, I was watching. Wait, what? I was watching moving YouTube videos. <laughs> what, moving YouTube videos? No, like somebody You're just, totally crying. Somebody just got the ability to see with in color. It was real. He was getting married and his wife gave it to him. It was really cute. Aww. So in the shower, we have those two speakers right there. Yeah. We were just talking about it. Don't you think this room could use a subwoofer? No! Clint! Yeah. I've said no like five times! It doesn't need a subwoofer. We just went upstairs and guess what? It's already up there. It's just sitting there lonely and sad. It's not lonely and sad. Yeah, People it's already it above the room. I know, but it's just so not needed though. It sounds great. It sounds great. Yeah. 
You don't want any more bass? No, I don't need any more bass. If we did it, Clint, show us where it would go and what would we need to do to get this thing in here? Right in between those two speakers, kind of centered in with the rain head, we would just cut a circle that looked just like those two speakers. Oh, it would be a circle but like that? It would, like they, it, would okay. cover, it would look just like one of those speakers. Uh -oh. What if something goes wrong with the tile? This is a shower for three, not for two. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's for, it's for He's talking about speakers, oh. not people. Well, so it would just be a circle right there. So we just need to cut some of the tile. But you think the tile will be okay? I think it will be fine. We're gonna try this. We're gonna put a card right here. It's one of those things that you vote. So we're gonna say, should we put a subwoofer in the shower? Go up to this little card. It's like this little eye thing up here. You hover your mouse over it or you touch it with your finger and then you can vote yes or no. So go ahead and vote. We'll leave the voting up for a week. Yeah, I'm fine with that. If they say yes, you can have it. Yes, it's up to you guys. Inside of the master bedroom, this was one of the biggest hits for the entire home show. We had 26,000 people walk through this home and we also had some news articles written about the house. They loved that we had hidden speakers inside of our wall. This wall looks totally normal. This is sheetrock right here. And then on this side, beautiful sheetrock, there is one thing down here. There's a big slit in the wall right here. So that is unusual to have a slit in the wall. Master Suite. Listen, dance airplay. The only song we do for every video. So instead of having big old speakers in the wall, we can hide them in the wall. I can control them with my phone. And then you just have music. This is one of the coolest technologies that we have in our home, and we did it in three different rooms inside of the house. I filmed the process of how they install this, because that's a big question. How do you get speakers inside of your wall? Lincoln and I are gonna make a video on our main channel, and we'll show you the whole process of putting it in. We'll take one of those speakers and take it apart, because it's not like a usual speaker that you see. I think they're amazing. Like, I've never seen anything like, I, I can't, can't hear you, you got I know. water. I was saying, I was saying that I'd never seen anything like it. When they showed it to me the first time, I was like, what on earth is this? It's so cool. This is the piano room, and right down here, you'll see a little slit. There is a subwoofer in the wall, right behind Cello Girl. And then up here, we have a couple more speakers that are way up there. We don't have to have the actual visible speakers inside of this room. We've got a couple that are up there and one over there. Lincoln's room, same thing. Also has a subwoofer that's on this side of the bed. And then he also has a speaker inside of the wall right there next to his bed. So it sounds really good. He does use those speakers a lot. Let's go upstairs and we gotta show you the movie room. When you come upstairs, we have what we like to call the movie room. And this has a touch screen in here also, just like every other room in the house and you can control everything from the Apple TV to the lighting, even the temperature in the house. You can control the temperature in all the different zones inside of the house. This was supposed to be our game room, but then once we put in these beds that come down, you can see um, we have to move the couch to even get the bed down. We wanted to put a pool table right here, but once you put this middle one down, there's really not a very good amount of room for the pool table. So we had a better option for this room, at least I think it's the best option. We call this the movie room now, and we put our OLED TV, the wallpaper TV inside of here. We have the Select Series True Audio speakers on here, right there, right there, and then we have two giant subwoofers. These are $5,000 subwoofers, retail value, each one of them. They have 12 inch speakers, two in each one. Leslie just, her mouth just, her jaw just dropped just when I said how much that. they were. I can't believe that's how much it costs. These are expensive speakers. We did a video a couple years ago about Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. And I was at CES and I listened to it and it sounded really cool. But now that we have this five channel setup with all the speakers, because we even have a bunch of speakers up here all along the walls. If you look up here and it says Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, that means that if you have a TV that is capable and you have a sound system that's capable, the image of the movie or the TV show is gonna look so clean and crisp. And then also the sound system is gonna be full surround sound versus just like two channel surround sound. And it sounds way better. I've watched the intro of Ford versus Ferrari probably 25 times because the first few seconds, it just does this awesome sequence where he's racing and it's loud. You hear all the cars zinging around your head. I don't even know how heavy this thing is, but I can barely lift it. It is so incredibly heavy. I think we need to find a fun way 
to break this thing. Oh boy. I gotta break inside of the speaker and see what's inside of it. All right, there you go. Movie room, must have. It's not your traditional movie room with like movie chairs and all of that, but it's kind of fun because we can all just kind of lounge in there, come in and out. The security system. I'm not gonna show you every camera that we have inside of our house right now. So right now, if you look on our video camera footage, it's tracking Clint and I just walking down the driveway and it will follow us all the way to the end of the driveway and it has face tracking software that will zoom in on people if, if we ever need to potentially identify somebody that snuck into our yard or broke into our house. We have multiple cameras just like this. Like I'm not gonna tell you how many, but it's over 20 cameras outside and inside of the house that are genuinely tracking us at all times of the day or night that aren't just connected to Wi-Fi. We have our own servers that they're connected to that are saving for months and months of data. Okay, so check it out. Right now it's zoomed in on me. Watch what happens when I run up. Okay, I'm gonna run up this way and watch how it tracks me. To make sure that we had full protection around the house, but we wanted to make sure we always had at least a minimum of two cameras picking up every location throughout the yard. So we made sure that no matter what, there was always two different angles kind of picking up every spot. Most locations, there's three or four that kind of pick it all up. It's a Luma surveillance camera. It has, has pan, tilt, zoom, but it also has auto tracking. And so it'll, it'll track down. We can set up face recognition if we'd like, so it'll not track certain things or certain certain people. And then it'll also send alerts if it, it finds someone that it doesn't like or it doesn't recognize, it'll send us an extra alert saying, hey, we've got someone that we're picking up, but it's not someone that we recognize. Obviously, security cameras aren't the answer to all things of security. There's other things you need to do to lock your house and just be safe at your home. It does add some extra comfort as a homeowner, especially when we're somebody that's online all the time, to know that we do have that layer of security over our home. So um, yes, love the security cameras. Security system, lights, shades, TVs, thermostats, showers, faucets, speakers. That's a lot of things that are connected. Wesley, what is your favorite thing about our Samark home? I mean, I like being able, to, it's just really being able to talk to it. Sometimes I feel like she talks to Siri more than she talks to me. Alexa. Hey Siri, text this person. I do, Siri, all the do time. This. Siri, tell me how Voice to get home. This is super important to me. Yeah. So I would say, I think I talk to Alexa the most when it comes to the light situation. I think we're going to see some huge leaps in as far as the technology goes with voice. We're kind of scratching the surface right now. I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it a lot, that he loves where voice is going. If you've used voice enabled products in the past and you've had a really bad experience, just know that they are getting better every single year as more and more companies adopt it into their hardware. So thank you again to True Audio and to Heartwalker Automation for installing the smart home inside of our dream home. These are things like you saw in the video today like that we never even thought of or when they asked us at the beginning, we were like, absolutely not, we don't need to have that. We never thought we'd have to live inside of our home 24 seven because of the quarantine. We'll get you in a second, dog. She rings a bell and she needs to go out. Check out the video on our What's Inside channel where we destroy and take apart a subwoofer to see what's inside of it, one of the world's largest subwoofers. If it's not out yet, it will be out soon. Watch the video on our What's Inside channel how we see what's inside of the in-wall speaker. If you're interested in learning more about True Audio speakers or Heartwalker automation, I will put links in the description. You guys can go check them out and you can learn for yourself or ask them questions about what things you might want to put inside of your house. Whether it's a new build or an existing home, they can come in and really upgrade your house and just make it smarter and more comfortable and make your quarantine time a little less dull. And yes, this is my tripod. I use my recycling bin as my tripod at the beginning of this video. Was it Jake Paul? Are we, did you get no. duped by Jake Paul's no. colorblind video? No, no, no. <laughs> Do you care for me more or Leslie more? I'm okay with it if you really want it. I just don't want to jeopardize the tile and I don't want to pay more money. That's all. It's always about Okay. Hi dog. Why are you following me? Thanks to Heartwalker Automation for installing <laughs> This is a shower for three, not for two. Bow chicka wow!